So the last topic for today's lecture is bootstrap. Uh, and to explain bootstrap with just three words, it's sampling with replacement. That's it. So, so we covered uh, cross-validation. Um, during the break, one of your classmates asked me a question about variable clustering. So there's a Jupyter notebook for uh, variable clustering, and I'm going to make it available on uh, Corcus. So if you just check the module page of the course, you can find that and run the code. Um, you know, it loads some um, tabular data. I guess it's on variables related to different wines. And uh, quality of wine is the response variable. And then uh, when you run variable clustering, you're going to see that there's clusters of variables which are measurements of wines. For example, acidity of a wine is highly correlated with, uh, I guess, pH of a wine. So if you have those two in the, in the data set, uh, maybe for making prediction, one of them is sufficient. So it's going to give you, I guess, four or five clusters um, of variables from a data set maybe with 20 features. Uh, so yeah, that's about uh, variable clustering. It's very common in statistics, but actually in, you know, in machine learning, uh, we don't use it as often because if the issue is a regression model that is suffering from collinearity, uh, we, we can use regularized fitting. So as long as we have reach and lasso regression, uh, we don't worry that much. And then uh, there are also kind of computer science approaches to uh, dealing with um, dimensionality, right? We have dimensionality reduction methods like principal component analysis or um, singular value decomposition. And using those methods, we deal with data sets that have a large number of columns. But kind of a, maybe an older statistical me method for dealing with large number of predictors is variable clustering. And it's, I guess, good to at least know what it does. All right, so now the next topic is bootstrap. So bootstrap is sampling from a data set with replacement. That's it. I guess this is not three words anymore, but still pretty concise, right? So the thing is, when we have a data set like this, when with n observations or n data points and p columns, um, we want to get um, an estimate of variability, sorry, we want to yeah, get a sense of variability of something that we estimate from this, from this data set. So this is not just about machine learning. Actually, Bootstrap is kind of a, uh, a family of methods that are general for different purposes in statistics. Uh, and the idea is simply sampling with replacement. So the thing is, in statistics, we think of the population. So there is this concept of a population, which is all the possible observations. But the thing is, we never have the population. We, always, we only have some sample of the population, which is a smaller thing compared to this cloud. You know? So to make it less confusing, I'm not going to use the word sample here, despite that this is a sample of the population. We can call this a data set. Right? That's the data that we have, and that's oftentimes not all the possible data that is out there. So when we want to get a, get a, get a sense of variability of some estimate, um, ideally it would be great if we could create more data sets. You know? Create more data sets, and then get that estimate here, get it here, get it here, get it here, so that we have four, four versions of it, and then uh, calculate standard deviation between them. Right? But the thing is we never have access to this population. I guess pretty much with the exception of working with census data in demography, we always have data sets, which is a limited number of observations compared to all the possible observations that could be out there. So that's why this idea doesn't work. We never have access to the population. So what we're going to do is kind of improvise. So instead of sampling from the population, which was this, we sample from the data set with replacement. So this is the data set. This is row number one, row number two, row number three, all the way to, let's say, row number 100. We sample with replacement. Um, let's say we get uh, n, if n is 100, we're going to get n, uh, n samples, so 100 samples. So we, get, we call this bootstrap sample 1. This is bootstrap sample 2. I was going to just use the initials, but then I changed my mind. Bootstrap sample n, or 100. So in bootstrap sample one, what we get is sampling with replacement. So this is how we do it. I need your help. Give me a number between one and 100, a random number. 25. 25. So the first row of this bootstrap sample is observation 25 from here. Give me a number between one and 100. 88. 88 is the second row. Can you give me a number? 99. I guess it's not really, really random. I see some pattern. All right. But we, we feel, you know, what we take 100 observations and they could be repeated. You know, maybe, maybe in the end we get 25 again, right? So some of them are going to appear more than once. Some of them will appear once. Some of them don't appear in a bootstrap sample. That's the other thing. So that was only bootstrap sample one. 
Then in bootstrap sample two, I need more random numbers. Random number between one and 100. 41. Like it. Looks pretty random to me. Another number. 41. Sorry? 41 again. OK. It's bit replacement, so 41 can appear twice. You said 41, right? OK. So then maybe 38. And maybe the last one is 5, whatever. Um, and then the last bootstrap sample, again, will be a sample with maybe 8, 17, uh, 58. All right, then whatever we could estimate from this data set, we can now estimate from each of these. So in your textbook, they use the IM, the, um, some topic from finance, um, which is you know when we have to, apparently in finance, if you want to design a portfolio, um, where you have information on returns of two financial assets, so each of these is like a security, or some ETF, or something that you can invest in. If you want to you combine these two in a portfolio, means in a collection of financial assets, um, in order to minimize the risk of that uh, portfolio, we decide to put alpha fraction of our money in X and one minus alpha in Y. And there is some formula from finance that the, in order to minimize the variance, what we can do is to use this formula for obtaining alpha, for deciding how much money should be put in X, and then one minus that, or the total you know, minus that amount will be this, will be for Y. So the formula, it's in the textbook. It comes from finance, so you know, I have uh, no idea where it comes from. But this is the formula. The formula says that we should use variance of Y minus covariance of X and Y over variance of X plus variance of Y minus two times covariance of X and Y. This is purely from finance, you know, nothing about statistics here. But the thing is, when we have one data set, which is you know, some limited information about how these two investments have performed over the, let's say, past couple of months, right? This whole data set is limited to some time, right? From this data set, we can get some alpha hat, right? And this alpha hat, we calculated, let's say it's, let me just use the same value that your textbook uses. Zero point fifty-seven. So this means that based on the correlation and variance of the returns of these two assets, the portfolio with minimum variance that contains X and Y should have fifty-seven percent of the budget invested on X and forty-three percent invested on Y. So this is good, but this is a kind of a point estimate. We want to get a sense of the standard error of alpha hat. We cannot get standard error of alpha hat because we only have one data set, right? If we had the standard error, we could simply, um, right? We could simply add and subtract 1.96 times standard error to make it to make it a range estimate, which is the same thing as confidence interval. So we cannot do it with one data set, but here we improvise and created in bootstrap data sets. Maybe from each of these, we can get some alpha hat, right? Now we have n of them. Therefore, the alpha hat bar becomes the average of alpha hat i over 100. And the standard error of alpha hat is, let's say, it's the And then we need to divide this by n minus 1 to be precise which is 99. So with Bootstrap, we're kind of improvising as if we have n data sets. And the way we create them is pretty convenient. We just you know, randomly pick from the data set, and it's bit replacement. You know, when we pick something, we can pick it in the next step again, in the next step of the same data set. And then when we have n data sets, we can get n estimates of whatever it is. This is meant to be an example on something complicated that we cannot analyze mathematically and obtain standard deviation of this directly with a formula. So this is used to be something complicated that we cannot get standard error directly for, but we can get the standard error like this. So now if we um, plot these values of alpha hat and the frequency, we're going to see that, let's say, we, we put them in bins, so this is some histogram, right? So we see that in, let's say, 20 out of those 100 cases, we get 0 0.57. 
which is the same value that we had here. Or we get, you know, I mean, this is a bin. So this is, let's say, between 0 0.57 and 0 0.58, right? It's some bin because these values are continuous. And we got a value in that range 20 times out of these 100 times. This is another bin. Maybe for this one, we, we observed that 18 times. This one, we observed that 16 times. Right? So this is the histogram. So this is some you know, empirical distribution of values of alpha hat. Now that we have this empirical distribution, uh, we, can, we can create a bootstrap confidence interval. So the bootstrap confidence interval, what we need, let's say it's a bootstrap confidence interval of, let's say, 95%. If our tolerance of type 1 error is 5%, then the confidence interval associated with it is going to have a reliability of 95%. This means that we need to pick these points, let's say A and B. This confidence interval is going to be this, from A to B. What is A? A is a kind of extremely low estimate of alpha. B is an extremely high estimate of alpha. So A is the, let's say, 0 0.025 percentile or quantile. Of the empirical distribution. This is empirical distribution because this is the distribution that we got empirically. So B is the, let's say, 0.975 quantile of the empirical distribution. Now that we have this, we know that empirically, only 2.5% of estimates could be, uh, could be smaller than alpha, I'm sorry, than A, and only 2.5% of the estimates could be larger than B. Therefore, the range from A to B is going to contain the true value of alpha with a likelihood of 95%. So with this idea of bootstrap, what we did was getting a confidence interval and a standard error. So standard error is nothing but the standard deviation of this empirical distribution. These are pretty much, you know, same concepts. The fundamental issue was that we had a point estimate and reliability of a point estimate is zero. Instead of it, we want a range estimate. And for getting a range estimate, we need, a, we need some measurement on the error of that estimate. We got the error. We can just write it like this and get a confidence interval. If we write it like this, we're assuming that this estimate is following a normal distribution because 1.96 is the 0.975 quantile of the standard normal distribution. Uh, so this, is, this involves some assumption, but we also have the assumption free way of getting the bootstrap confidence interval, which is just get these estimates. Um, and they work even if this distribution is not symmetric. This distribution could have been anything. Any distribution is going to have quantiles for different values. And when we use these quantiles, they're going to give, give us a 95% confidence interval. Any questions? So this bootstrap method is, is very important in statistics and uh, also in machine learning. Like, you know, you must have heard of uh, bagging in, in tree-based methods. So in tree-based methods, um, what we're doing is uh, picking a subset of the variables to branch on in the decision tree that we grow. And that subset comes from bootstrap uh, samples of the, of the variables. Therefore, when we grow a tree based on this, it's going to be different from a tree grown on this. And then we take the majority vote between, what, between the prediction of this tree and prediction of this tree. That's how we can keep the advantages of a uh, decision tree um, and kind of resolve the issues of a decision tree, which is limited accuracy. Uh, so yeah, this is bootstrap. Um, let me see if there's anything else I should discuss. Yeah, I guess I pretty much covered it all. Uh, just one thing. So in your textbook, uh, it is mentioned that in each bootstrap sample, something around 2 thirds of the observations are expected to be there. So this bootstrap sample is going to have roughly 2 thirds of these 100 observations. This is because some of them will be repeated and the other ones cannot, be, cannot fit there. You know? so, so in Bootstrap, um, we have equal chance for sampling each observation. So observation is the same thing as data point. Um, so what this means is that when we are creating a Bootstrap sample, there are n places. For the first place, we're going to have um, n possibilities, right? There are n possibilities. You know, this first one can be observation 1 or 2 all the way to 100. The second one can be, again, 1 or 2 all the way to 100. Therefore, n possibilities here. 
all the way to the last one, which has n possibilities. Therefore, there are for one boot, uh, there, therefore there are n to the power of n different possible bootstrap samples from a data set with n data points. So that's one thing to consider that you know this number is really large, right? That's why when when we take n bootstrap samples, you know. Um, a, a large number like n is really needed because number of possibilities is actually n to the power of n. Let me give you another perspective of this. When we have one data set with 100 data points, you need, normally you would get 100 bootstrap samples from it. Not four, not five, 100. Why is it? This is because there are n to the power of n possibilities and you want to get different bootstrap samples to cover some of these. So if you have statisticians friends, you may ask them, you know, when, when their when their uh, computer is running something, you may ask them what is it running. Chances are they will say Bootstrap, because for Bootstrap, if the data set is large, like one million, then we need to create one million Bootstrap samples, right? This is very time consuming. Uh, one other thing about the two thirds. So uh, the, the the two third that is mentioned in the textbook comes from the fact that for the uh, let's say the probability of probability of a given observation not appearing not appearing in a uh, bootstrap sample right so the bootstrap sample is going to have n places for the first place if you want one specific observation not being picked up here there are n minus 1 possibilities over n possibilities and this is for the first place therefore this thing to the power of n is the probability that a given observation doesn't appear uh, in here. And so this is 1 minus 1 over n to the power of n. And here, when n goes to infinity, this thing reaches 1 over e, which is roughly 1 over 3, right? That's why in your textbook, it says each bootstrap sample is going to roughly have th two thirds of the data points. Because for each data point, there's a chance of one third that it doesn't appear there, right? And they are independent, right? So that's why one bootstrap sample is going to roughly have two thirds of the, of the data points. Uh, yeah, so um, I've, um, copy, I've provided the, some practice problems from previous meter. They are on Corcus, and you may check them out. As there's no more time, uh, you can check them out later um, at home, and I will make the solutions available. You can just check your answers against the solutions to get a sense of uh, how prepared you are for the meter. Thanks a lot for your attention and see you next week.